Well, that's a very tough act to follow. But I'm going to start with good morning, and Zach St. George told me that was a good place to start. <laughs> but first, I'd, I'd really like to acknowledge the fact that of all the amazing writers seated before you right now, you guys chose a video journalist to write and deliver a speech, so we're going to see how this goes. But all jokes aside, I'm really honored to be speaking here before you today. Um, as journalists, we make it our life's work to share the stories of other people. Sure, we might be unraveling political corruption or tracking big spending by major corporations, but at the very core of what we do is characters. It's people and their stories. I think it's what draws many of us to this kind of work, and these relationships that we develop with our sources are very meaningful and make the work meaningful. But while we spend our careers telling the stories of other people, it's our own stories that often go overlooked. And I think these stories are ones that can't be ignored. It's who we are that shapes the work that we do. And that's why I'm honored to be here today to share with you the story of the class of 2014. Now, I've learned a lot in journalism school, and I know that there are many ways to start a story. Bob Kahlo might tell me to start with all my action, put my best bites at the top. Eric Simmons and Kara Platoni might sit me down and say, Witty, you got to go Rashomon with this one. But I think that could be a little awkward in a speech given by one person. So I'm going to defy my education a little bit, and I'm going to be a little bit boring, and I'm going to start at the beginning. So it was March of 2012 that we all pretty much met each other, right? It was welcome week. I think it's safe to say that we were different people then. Among our ranks was a Division I athlete, two mothers, a paramedic, a veteran, teachers, baristas, waiters, bartenders, even a touring musician. I remember being so impressed with how dynamic and interesting you all were and incredibly intimidated. We had come from all over the world and lived such different lives, but we were here bonding over this one thing, to do good journalism. As far as JTales go, ours was a pretty classic one. We bonded in the throes of J200, covering crime and politics, health and education in places like Richmond, Oakland, and the Mission in San Francisco. And then the world was our oyster. We went to Namibia to investigate poaching of endangered African rhinos, to Brazil to report on a new stadium for the World Cup and the ways in which that project would affect the lives of the people living in favelas, and to the U.S.-Mexico border to learn about people trying to make better lives for themselves in this country. We went to India, Australia, Micronesia, Chile, the list goes on and on. We reported together, talked about story ideas ad nauseum, and we even won awards together. But there's a side to our story that a lot of people don't know, that many of the faculty, staff, and family members here today haven't seen. And it all centers around this place, Northgate Hall. A classmate once told me, sometimes, even when I don't have any work to do, I come to the J School because I know there will always be cool peeps to kick it with. Tizzle. I think we all know who that was. But he's right. We all remember those late night chats in the TV lab, afternoon beers in the newsrooms, and dozens and dozens of dance parties in the library with our favorite DJ Horchata. <laughs> It's these private moments that I think truly round out our story. We've helped each other through a lot more than J school. We've shared cars and clothes, fallen in love, and suffered tragic losses together. We've visited each other in hospital beds, vacationed together, skied together, played music together, lived together. We've challenged each other in great ways. Lengthy conversations about diversity, race, religion, politics, gender. We've fought against each other and for each other. We've changed each other's minds and shaped each other into the people we are seated here today. I don't think any of us can deny that. Oh, and we partied yeah. a lot. <laughs> so who do we count among our ranks today? 51 journalists ready to conquer, conquer the world, that's for sure but also 51 people with stories of our own that are unique and awesome and very important too. And now we share this one collective story that I think we all know has had a great beginning and is very, very far from its end. So to sit, today we say goodbye to this place, to Northgate Hall, a small, 
unassuming building on campus that along with a leaky roof and a very frustrating heating cooling system <laughs> stores a wealth of memories and experiences that we will all take with us. So we're off into the world where there will be many more stories. I think it was Dean Wasserman that said earlier this week that your next story is your best story. And for us, there will be many of them. Some will win awards and earn prestige. Many will go unnoticed. But I hope it's this story, our story, the class of 2014, that we never forget. So thank you. Congratulations to my colleagues, my friends. I love you all. Let's go kick some ass.